Hi, you guys. Welcome back. And of course, if you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Tracy Erickson. And in this video, I'm going to tell you guys how together we can literally change the world in a very short amount of time. So stay tuned. If you've been watching Meaningful Motivations with Tracy Erickson for any time now, then you may already be acquainted with the scale of consciousness. But just in case you are not already acquainted, let me go ahead and put that on the screen for you. I don't think I really have to say it out loud for you to know what I mean when I say that fear is kind of ruling our collective unconscious at this time. And if you see fear on the scale of consciousness, you will notice that it's in the level uh, below courage and therefore is a weakening state of consciousness. So as you experience fear, you are weakening your immune system, you are weakening the muscles of your body, you are literally weakening, you know, your entire system as a whole, whether mind, emotions, um, or just physically speaking. Okay, so now take a look at where love resides on the scale of consciousness. Love is a much higher and stronger vibration than fear. Some of you might have caught on that I said collective unconscious. And that really is a thing. So let me kind of briefly explain that to you. So we are each individuals. We each have our own awareness, our own consciousness, and we're experiencing this level of reality through our own filter of ego, right? But we are also all connected as one. Um, many people who just have a deep knowing sense of who they are understand this collective unconscious. So this collective unconscious I'm referring to is kind of like where all minds come and meet, right? Now, this is unconscious to our physical waking self. But we are all a part of a grander scheme. We are all a part of one big whole when it comes right down to the most simple form of awareness. So we have this thing called a collective unconscious, which affects all of us and all, and it can also benefit all of us at the same time, right? So that is the part that is that we're really kind of focusing in on during this video when I'm going to share with you an idea, like something that we can do. We can do this together to literally raise the vibration of the entire planet. In his book, Power Versus Force, The Hidden Detriments of Human Behavior, Dr. David Hawkins actually points out um, that in 85% of the human race calibrates below the critical level of 200, while the overall average level of human consciousness today is approximately 207. And that was at the time of his writing of this book. So the power of the relatively few individuals near the top actually counterbalances the weakness of the masses towards the bottom to achieve this overall average. So when 85% of the human race actually calibrates below 200, our collective calibration is still 207. And that is due to the very high calibrating individuals that exist out there. So it says here, only 4% of the world's population calibrates at an energy field of 500 or above. Only 0.4% reach to the 540 level. And a level of consciousness calibrating at 600 or above is reached by only 1 in 10 million. Meditation is widely known to affect 
people on an individual level. With meditation and a regular practice of meditation, you can actually lower your stress levels and that also lowers your chance of illness and disease. Um, now, meditation practice can also help you to raise your individual consciousness, to raise your vibration up in the scale of consciousness, up into the higher levels of consciousness. And in those higher levels of consciousness, life just kind of works out for you a little better because you're not using force. You are not then creating something that must have a resistance. Wherever there is force, there's an equally met resistance, right? Now, when you are in power rather than force, you no longer have that wall of resistance that you're butting up against all the time. So raising your consciousness is very important when it comes to living an easily flowing life that is also giving you a lot of happiness and contentment on an individual level. But what if I told you that we could all meditate together and that that would literally change the world? I'm going to show you a clip now from an, an experiment that was done in the 70s using transcendental meditation and how that affected the planet at a time where we were experiencing, you know, a lot of unrest and wars going on. I'm going to show you very quickly some of the early research. This is the first study, and I won't go into it in great detail except to say that this experiment was performed in the Middle East during the peak of the Lebanon War in the early 1980s. It was hypothesized, based on many previous smaller experiments, that if enough people were collectively experiencing and stimulating this fundamental powerful field of peace within, that there would be a radiated influence of peace that would affect the behavior of people throughout society. People would wake up in the morning and they'd decide, hey, I don't think I'm going to kill anybody today. <laughs> what a novel thought. That, you know, with some expanded comprehension, a less narrowly cramped, narrowly self-centered, acutely stressed vision, that those desperate acts of terrorism simply don't really have a fertile field to fall on. So this chart shows a dotted line going up and down, which is the rise and fall on a daily basis of the number of people who were meditating as a group in Jerusalem, about a thousand people on average, sometimes more, sometimes less. And the solid line represents progress towards peace in the war in neighboring Lebanon. And even before the benefit of statistical analysis, you can almost see from the raw data that progress towards peace, measured by reduced war deaths, reduced war injuries, reduced number of bombs, that progress towards peace goes up and down almost in lockstep with the number of people who are meditating as a group, radiating this influence of inner peace to become outer peace. When this was subject to mathematical analysis, the likelihood that this is simply due to some fluke, due to chance, is less than one part in 10,000 to be able to say something with this certainty that group meditation prevented war. That is a really remarkable finding. When this was published in the Yale University Journal of Conflict Resolution, it ignited a firestorm. First of all, it took two years to publish the paper because the editors reviewed it and reviewed it and reviewed it, and they said in the end, this paper is unassailable. This paper was performed at a status, a standard of scientific rigor far beyond that required for publication in any journal. So they had to publish it, but they published it with a letter. And the letter in the journal said, the results of this experiment are so unexpected that a thousand people could influence the behavior of a million, that they urged other scientists to go out and repeat the study. And that's exactly what happened over the next two and a quarter years. Seven other scientific collaborations went out and repeated the study, training and assembling groups of meditators, practicing transcendental meditation. And in every one of these experiments during this two and a quarter year period, there was a marked reduction in violence and war. 80% drop in war deaths and war-related injuries. 
Christ in comparison to all the other days during the two and a quarter years where there were no meditating groups when the situation grew slightly worse, as this chart shows, in comparison to seven highly positive bars showing highly statistically significant progress towards peace in every single experiment. If you put these together, the likelihood that this reduction of war was, again, simply due to chance and not due to the meditating groups was less than one part in 10 million, million, million. There is far more evidence that group meditation can turn off war like a light switch than there is evidence that aspirin reduces headache pain, for example. It is a scientific fact. So according to that experiment, a simple practice of meditation, when it was amplified by many people doing it at the same time, the effect could be seen in the outer world due to the effect that it had on our collective unconscious. Now, I do know that Dr. David Hawkins points out that the more individuals actually raise their consciousness, the better it is for the overall collective consciousness of the planet. So that is if we were to raise our consciousness as individuals. So one enlightened person, such as Jesus or the Buddha, or one of, you know, a dozen others that have been on this planet, one of those individuals is enough to raise the vibration of millions of other people on this planet. So now I want to ask just what can we do as individuals when we come together as a whole to meditate for world peace? And now I want to introduce you to the World Peace Card Meditation. And I decided to invite all of my viewers and subscribers to participate in this event. It is a monthly event that is put on by the International Center for Reiki Training. I will be sure to put some links in the description box down below, so be sure to check that out. Now. What this is, is that once a month, there is a meditation at 7.30 p.m. in your own time zone. And this is actually practiced by people all over the world once a month. Now, what that does is it gives us one day of each month where there is a wave of this positive meditative energy going over the planet as each time zone um, you know, practices their meditation at 7.30 p.m. in their respective time zones. So this is like bringing the idea of our collective unconscious and um, meditating to raise that vibration. It's kind of bringing those two ideas together. So I'll just tell you briefly about the World Peace Card Meditation. Um, William Lee Rand is the founder of International Center for Reiki Training. And William Lee Rand has actually gone around the world and placed these crystal grids uh, all around the world with all the different religious symbols put on it as well. So it's an idea that all of the people from all different walks of life and from all beliefs are now coming together for the sole purpose of world peace. He even placed uh, one of these crystal grids at the North and the South Pole of the Earth. So I will put a link down in the description as well for you to print off your own copies of these world, uh, world Peace Cards. Because what we do is we meditate with the World Peace Cards on this one day of each month at 7.30 p.m. your time zone. Now, I know that this meditation is kind of designed for Reiki practitioners, but you do not have to be a Reiki practitioner to participate in the World Peace Card uh, meditation. So if you are interested, go into my description box, click the link to pull up the PDF of your uh, World Peace Cards and print them off. And I really just wanted to share this with you guys so that 
if you're interested in helping to raise the vibration of this planet, we might as well get as many people meditating on these dates as possible. And I also wanted to show you guys my World Peace uh, cards because um, I actually got these from my Reiki master when I was attuned to the Reiki. So you can see all the symbols for all the different religions of the world. Now we have one for each representing each of the different locations that these crystal grids were placed around the world by William Lee Rand. And so each of these are representing another place on the planet that is housing one of these crystal grids. You know, again, this is a once a month thing. So please feel free to continue to join each and every month. Do it on your own accord if you would like. And just remember, it's always good to meditate, even to raise your own individual consciousness. Because as Dr. David Hawkins pointed out, any of us who can raise our vibration up into the higher levels of consciousness will actually be helping those who are still living in the lower vibrations. So in order to help our fellows, our fellow friends come on up out of those lower vibrations, the best thing we can do is improve ourselves. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. So if you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share this video with all your friends out there. We need to get as many people to meditate as possible. And of course, if you're a viewer but not yet a subscriber, I would just love for you to click subscribe down below. And once you have subscribed, you can then click that notification bell so that you can be notified each and every time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time with me. I love you and I'll see you next time. Bye.